Hi guys, uh, welcome to episode two of the addendum. Um, in this episode, I'm going to address uh, two items. Number one, uh, what to do about the restriction of 127 markers. Uh, some people have huge sessions like myself. I do it for Facebook Live where I have uh, uh, over 100 songs in there and it's easily over 127 markers. And um, you cannot automatically jump to marker 150 uh, because 127 is the highest MIDI number available. So uh, there's a workaround. I'm going to show you how to do that uh, or what to do about it. Uh, the other uh, subject I'm going to address is that I also added chord charts into my sessions, which are helpful for, you know, especially I use it for new songs where I might not, uh, that I still have to learn or songs I haven't played in so long that I don't remember the changes of the bridge or something like that and I can peek at it while I play. Um, <clears throat> if you have good eyesight, you might go as far as putting melody in there and have a sax play along or play along with it or you know whatever your instrument might be. Um, for myself, I just use it as uh, as a little reminder what the chord changes are. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do these two things. Here we go. Here is my logic session that I use for Facebook Live for my show. And there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, we're going up to 177 markers. Uh, there are not 177 songs, there may be 120 songs in there because some songs have a couple different markers like for open solo sections, etc. So how do I deal with that? Um, of course, there is the direct way in Logic. I just uh, created a keystroke for uh, going to a direct marker. I can uh, press this, uh, the period here and type in the marker number 158 and it will jump. And this is quickly done if I want to just create key command, edit assignments, type in go to marker. I already done that. And uh, you see uh, learn by key position. I use the right keyboard thing right there and create the T stroke. And that's all there is to it. Now every time I type that in, I get the window and I can type in whatever number I want. So this might be a decent solution for if you have one song that's outside the range of 127 locator positions and you want to get there and you just type in that one song position number for that song and then have it jump back into your regular session afterwards. But uh, if there's several songs that you want to use that are in the higher range above 127, um, there might be a, a different solution that I could suggest. Uh, one way I do this on my live show is, let's say I want to play uh, Feeling Good, which is number 156 here, right? All right. So that's obviously more than 127, and I want to go automatically there. I'm also going to play Modern Times, um, but I'm not going to play any of these songs. These are older stuff. So all I do is I'll go first to marker sets. I create a duplicate set and call it um, temp. Usually I give it a date, 619, let's say, right? And now I just go in there and I start deleting the songs that I'm not going to play today. And I'm not going to delete the songs, I'm just going to delete the markers until my feeling good is 127. So I need about 20 more markers here that I need to throw out. I'm not now playing any of these songs. Maybe I play this song, I'll leave that in there. Take these, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do that one. Not gonna do this, let me see where we at. Now at 133, and since I was not gonna play these two songs, you get the idea, 
and finally we have 127 and that's the last song and I'm not going to play any songs over here so this is the last song in the session and now I'm down to 127 for today's show I can change my markers here my go-to markers to uh, go to anything up to 127 and we'll basically reach that song and then for the next day I just go back and delete that set and go back to my all title set right and I'm back to where I was another way you could do it you could create a second marker set again we're going to duplicate and I'm going to erase everything from 1 to 1 to 7 the easiest way to do that is right here just go to markers and I'm going to throw out all these markers up to 127 up to here delete them all right so now this marker set I need to rename it which would be 128 to end has been renamed and renumbered it starts first song will be two and uh, now I can go back and forth between my sets let's say I'm playing uh, keep rolling and from there I want it to go to just smile all right I'll keep rolling is 114 I could not change this to 138 so to do it I go and go over here just smile is 11 it changes to 11 all right now I'll go back to my first marker set and on keep rolling where were we all right all I have to do now is when I play when I start playing keep rolling before it goes here I need to change this to this marker set and now if I play the end of keep rolling it just should jump since we change this to marker 11 it just jump right there let's try it the end of the song and it will go and be ready for just smile fairly easy way to reach the songs with higher marker numbers uh, unfortunately there is no key command to switch marker sets so that's the one thing you're going to have to do manually when you want to reach these higher songs uh, on the last song where you want to switch into the higher set you're going to have to manually switch the marker numbers um, but uh, you know that's uh, still a lot easier than having to type in every single song um, especially if you're playing several songs in that higher set so there might be an, uh, another easy option for you to do so the second thing I told you I want to address is adding a chord chart to my sessions and the way I like to do it is that I would like to have the chords move along with the actual playback in real time um, I usually do this for all my songs because I work on so many different tracks uh, that I don't want to spend and waste time having to reanalyze the song and you know going back and forth I might not remember the changes so I have to sit down figure out the changes again so I just put a chord chart in every song that I work on and that chord chart I then import into my performance session so let me show you how to do this we want to get uh, as an example I would like to add the chart to the song 9 to 5 you see there's no chart here this is my chord chart track I put everything in one single long chord chart track and of course you could just uh, manually type in the chord symbols here we go let's go back um, above each uh, and write it in manually but since I've done a chord chart already here's how you input it you go to your uh, browser for all the media uh, you direct to the album 
uh, which is the Cool Shades album 95 was here. I think this session has the chord chart in it. And I have here the chord chart track. I click content. That's really all I need. And I click on add. It will look for the audio files, which I'm not really concerned because we're only going to import a chord chart, which is a MIDI track um, with just the chord information. And it puts it right there. So now I bring it up here and got to line it up under my song. Let me see. So, that's a one bay over to the right. And then join it. Uh, pressing J. Was a different media channels so I'm converting it, so now it's in here. So that's there, and this, I kind of keep this up. Um, now, when I play live, this whole thing looks more like this. Let me see. So what I'm looking at live is, is, is this. I'm looking at the markers. I leave this track open, um, uh, and, and so I can click on it and I disen uh, disengage the link. So once it's there, we'll stay on that. Also, in preferences, I set double click on MIDI will open score editor instead of piano roll. Um, I usually when I work on, on production, I have it set to piano roll because for me that's easier to edit. But in this case, I want to leave it on score editor. Otherwise, if you click on it, it will first go to piano roll and then you have to switch over to score. It's just an extra step, but that's unnecessary. So here we are. Uh, and now I can, you know, God, I forgot, what is the bridge? And, uh, and I don't need all of them, I'm mo I know most of them, but for some of the new stuff, uh, like for the new album, that I still need to, you know, memorize all the changes, uh, it's helpful. And, uh, you know, it, I can make it big enough on stage so I can just peek over and see what the changes are, and then it's really helpful. All right, um, I have one more installment for you guys. Uh, I do a live show every Saturday, Neil's Live From Home, where I use my Logic session and perform to it. And um, I also switch camera angles uh, and scenes with OBS. Now that whole, that same method can be used for switching uh, stomp boxes, uh, MIDI keyboard gear, MIDI guitar amps, anything that can accept MIDI you can control from Logic uh, on one of these tracks. I'll show you how to do this in the next installment. All right, peace. <laughs>